session.
there um, is obviously a discrepancy here. Either you may at home see Johnny Carson and she may at home miss an accident completely, or you may at home in two or three minutes and she did hit somebody. Objection, Your Honor. That question is too vague. The same. Do you please ignore the question? Um, Mr. Gavardi, is it possible that your clothes were dampened when you walked home from Miss Bowers' home instead of Miss Cochran's? Yes, it is. Um, did your clothes get slightly bit moisturized between Miss Cochran's home and Miss Teller's car? Yes. Mr. Gavardi, is it true that you were wearing jeans, a dark shirt, and black members only jacket on the night in question? Yes. Um, is it a fact that dark mirror tails tend to absorb rather than reflect light? Objection, Your Honor, the witness is not an expert. You should have cussed me. Okay, so, Mr. Gavardi, is it possible that under the aforementioned um, this is not sequence, that person could be visible and not be no I mean, could be in a vehicle and not be noticed. Objection, Your Honor. The counsel is asking for a conclusion. Sustain. Please ask the phrase question. Okay. Um, Mr. Gubart, I ask you um, at least one final question. Would you ever lie to protect your student visa and <coughs> the possibilities of going to bed this morning? I'm sorry. You know, I couldn't, I really couldn't rephrase the question because it was a big one, two question mark. You look at the two pages as well. starts at 11.30 every night? Yes. Um, isn't it true that, no, um, isn't it true that you change into your clo dry clothes before you watch Johnny Carson? Yes. Um, how long does it take, I mean, it takes about five minutes to change clothes, right? No. Um, would it take only a minute or so? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Gabari, isn't it true that Johnny Carson starts his monologue every night at 11.30? Objection, Your Honor. He might not be a witness on Johnny Carson's show. He's not an expert on Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Gabari, isn't it true that um, Johnny Carson starts all his shows with his monologue? I would guess. Um, Mr. Gabari, isn't it safe to assume that um, since he starts every... Um, of every one of his shows with the monologue, you could have said that you were there watching his monologue? Yes. Um, Objection. That calls for a conclusion, Your Honor. Um, no further questions, Your Honor.
invite you to answer it loudly and clearly so that the jury can hear you. Um, do you know Miss Sandy Ballard? Yes, I do. How well do you know her? Um, I know her very well. Um, how do you know her? She's on the swim team that I coach at. Okay, um, as Miss Ballard's coach, um, how would you describe her personality or attitude toward others? Um, she's very nice. She cares about others. Do you trust her? Yeah. Um, does she have any um, unique qualities? She's real considerate of others. Um, have you on any occasion seen her um, abuse her body in any way? No, I, Your Honor, you can expect both people to speak up. Um, what kind of a swimmer is Ms. Ballard? She's a very good swimmer. Um, on the night of April 27, 1984, does Ms. Ballard um, call you? No. Um, and then is it true that the only reason you testify today is because you stand to lose something? Prestige if um, she was found guilty? Not really. I care about sin. Nice. Is there any reason why you have to lie to the court today? No. Um, knowing Ms. Ballard's gentle um, nature, do you have any reasons to um, believe that she was the driver of the car that hit Mrs. LaFrance? No. Your Honor, may I have a 20-second um, recess? <laughs>
Mr. Narasaki, is it true that uh, Miss Ballard got a scholarship to a top-notch college? Yes. And uh, if she did attend, wouldn't that bring you recognition? Yes, Your Honor, that costs an opinion. Um, wouldn't that bring you recognition? It might. It might. A little. Um, you yes, said that you. It's hard to say. Guess you're all, please. Yeah. Um, you said you cared for Miss Ballard, correct? Yeah. Would that also include lying for her? Objection, Your Honor. That calls for a conclusion. No. No. No more questions, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, the defense would like to call Mr. Barry Porter to defend. Order in the court. Barry Porter, capital P, lowercase O R E R. She's on my swim team. Uh, we're real close friends. Um, on the night of April 27, 1984, do you remember that? Uh, yes, I do. What were you doing on that night? You said uh, between 9 and 11 o'clock? I was uh, attending a party at Miss Jill Carkham's house. Um, what was the purpose of the party? Um, it was to honor uh, Jill for, I mean, uh, Cindy for her uh, Olympic trials. Did you see Miss Bell Ballard there? Uh, yes, I did. Um, was she alone? Um, well, I spoke with her for a while at the party, and uh, Jill Cochran um, introduced her to Mr. Gabardi. Can you please point out to Jill? Point um, Jill out to Jill the Jill's um, right over there in the purple sweater. Can you point um, the Mr. Gabardi out, please? Mr. Gabardi, has been man right there. Um, if Miss Ballard was um, not alone, then she was with Mr. Gabardi? Uh, yeah, she was, during, yeah, she was with them for a while during the party. What were they doing? Um, they were talking, dancing, drinking. Um, Objection, that, that is not in the, that is not in evidence sir, that they were both <coughs> drinking. Again, Mr. Porter, what was Jill and Mr. Um, Gabardi doing? They were dancing, talking, and drinking. Um, during the party, at any time did you leave, um, did you see Mr. Gabardi and Miss Ballard leave? Uh, yes, I did. They left uh, through the kitchen, through the kitchen door. Okay. Um, before that, did you see uh, Miss Ballard holding a glass <coughs> of water or um, Yeah, I think she had a, a cup, or a mixed drink to the clear glass. Did you see her take any sips from that glass? Uh, yeah, rarely, every, every once in a while, but she had the same cup in her hand all night long. How did she look to you um, after she had some sips? Uh, she looked fine. Um, was Mr. Gabardi drinking too? Um, yes, I saw him drinking out of the vodka bottle, straight out of the vodka bottle, as a matter of fact. Did you actually see him? Yes, drink I did. Yes, I did. Um, can you describe the effect the um, vodka has on Mr. Gabardi? Um, Objection, Your Honor. It's not here. Sustained. Uh, please ignore the question. Um, Mr. Porter, it is now almost 11 at night. At 11 p.m. at night, and um, was Mr. Gabardi and Miss Ballard still at the house? Um, no, they had left by that time. Um, did you see them leave? Um, yes, I saw them leave to the, the kitchen door. Um, do you know where they went? Um, they went out to the car because uh, I, I remember hearing two car doors slam, so I suppose. Do you um, recall what kind of clothes they were wearing that night? Um, I remember. Uh, Cindy was wearing her bellwether sweater, it was white, and um, Mr. Gabardi was wearing a pair of blue jeans, a, a dark shirt, and a mem black members only jacket. Um, how did you feel when you seen Mr. Gabardi <coughs> left with Miss Ballard? Um, well, I was concerned for Jill, I mean for Cindy, excuse me, because uh, she was, because Mr. Gabardi was drinking a little too much. Did you keep that concern to yourself or did you express it to anyone else? Uh, no, I told uh, Jill, you know, that I was, um, you know, that maybe she do she should do something, but Jill told me that you know Mr. Gabardi was a nice guy and that, that she was in good hands. What did you do next? 
played some Trivia Life with some friends. Did you play Trivia Life all night? Uh, no, we played for a while. Then we went upstairs and uh, we were going to watch some videos. MTV. Um, sorry. On your way up, did you go straight there or did you make any stops? Uh, no, I had to, I stopped by the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom. Um, were you any chance taking a breath of fresh air? Well, yeah, when I was in the bathroom, you know, it was a little stuffy in the house because there was a lot of people. And so I opened the window in the bathroom before, uh, before I really went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, ordered, and, um, when I was, uh, taking a breath of fresh air, I saw the Miss Cindy Bowers' car down in the driveway. Um, were you jealous of Mr. Gabardi? Oh, no. Nothing to be jealous about. From your vantage point um, Order, upstairs, Order. from your vantage point upstairs, um, can you tell us something about the seating arrangement? Um, the well, from the angle I was at, I remember seeing a, a black object uh, covering uh, over a white object. So I guess I can say, <laughs> Order, please. So um, it, it seemed to be like as if. Um, Miss Ballard was in the in the middle of the seat. Objection, Honor, that's not in evidence. Sustained. Um, at any, at any time during the um, oh, excuse me. Well, we're sustained. You got it. You have to tell the jury. The jury, please ignore the question. It's important, especially this is an important one. Okay. How long did you watch the um, car? Uh, for approximately one minute. Um, at any time during that one minute, did you see the car leave? Uh, yes, I did. It backed up and went down the hill. Um, before it left, did you hear anything suspicious? Uh, no. No footsteps or door signs? No. So, I guess they, they, no one ever got back out of the car. So. Um, once again, Mr. Porter, how well do you know Ms. Ballard? Um, as I said, we've known each other since the 10th grade, swam together on the swim team for, you know, she's a real good friend, but that's all we are, just friends. Um, do you have any deeper friend feelings for her besides friendship? No, just friends. Mr. Porter, are you testifying today because you are concerned that Ms. Ballard might lose her scholarship? Well, uh, that's part of the reason, and, um, you know, I just don't, you know, I know she's innocent, I know she didn't do it, so. Mr. Porter, do you have anything to gain by testifying today? No. Um, perhaps you may be jealous of her, of Mr. Gabardi? No. Um, keeping in mind that you are still on oath, would you like to the court to um, save Ms. Ballard's future in any way? No, I wouldn't like. Do you doubt that Ms. Ballard is innocent? No. Your Honor, may I have a 10-second um, recess? May. the same glass all night long. Okay, no question yet. You seem to have a very good memory, Mr. Porter. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Um, can you tell me how many people were at the party, Mr. Porter? I really don't keep track Objection, of Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. I would draw the question. <laughs> Mr. Porter, um, for as many people as there was at the party, you seem to remember an awful lot about Miss Ballard. Um, can you tell me how many glasses of drinks that Miss Ballard had? Well, I only saw her with one cup in her hand all night long, mm -hmm. and she was taking sips. Yes. Should I answer, ask yes or no questions oh. if you instruct him to answer yes or no? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, can you please instruct him to answer appropriately right now to this question? Answer appropriately to the answer's question. How many drinks does Ms. Valerie have? 
sport. Okay, I only start with uh, one cup in her hand all night long. Um, so, can you please instruct the witness to answer yes or no to my questions? Just before we now answer yes or no to these questions. Um, did you, were you in direct contact with Ms. Goddard all night long? Um, no I wasn't. So is it true that she could have refilled her glass then when you weren't watching? It's possible. Yes or no? No. No, it's not possible. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, you say at that time you saw them go out to the car, is that correct? Yes. Um, and you said you heard two door slams, correct? Yes. Um, with an awful lot of people at the party, and there's going to be more than one car, isn't it possible that somebody else could have slammed some doors outside? Well, yes or no? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Honor. Calls for conclusion. Uh, overruled. <laughs> Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter. <laughs> Mr. Porter, is it possible that somebody else could have slammed their car doors? Yes, it's possible. Um, you then mentioned that you went up to watch music videos. MTV? Right. Um, do you usually take breaths of fresh air in the restroom? Uh, <laughs> no, but that seems like the only place it was, since it was really crowded. Yes or no, Mr. Porter? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you usually urinate with the window open, Mr. Porter? <laughs> Um, isn't it true, Mr. Porter, that most bathroom windows are tinted or in some way obstructed from view? Um, there was a curtain. Yes or no? No. Yes. So, Objection, Your Honor, that is his name. He has no knowledge of that. Um, is, was there a curtain in the bathroom, Mr. Porter? Yes, there was. So, you open the cur curtain when you're using the bathroom? Uh, just, no, just, to get a fresh, just to get a fresh air. Okay. Stay. Please, uh, um, from your vantage point, Mr. Porter, could you see the car drive off? Uh, yes, I could. Could you see who was in the car? Uh, not, no, I knew, no. I saw a Yes or no, sweater. Mr. Porter? No. Okay, um, can I have a 10 second recess? testimony that you were watching the Miss Ballard's car for over a minute. Is that correct? Uh, approximately a minute. Yes, sir. Yes. Is the question again, please? You state that in your testimony you were watching Miss Ballard's car for over a minute. Is that true? No. No, it's not true? No. Okay. But you just stated that earlier. No, I said approximately a minute, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you usually watch people's cars for over a minute? Well, Just in your honor, that's irrelevant. Well, as I said before. Yes or know. no, Mr. Porter? No. <laughs> no, you don't? No. Okay. Was this some sort of special night while you were watching cars for longer than that? Objection, Your Honor. It's harassing the witness. Counselor is harassing the witness. Overruled. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? Is this a special night for you watching cars for over a minute? No. No? Is it possible you're watching that car for over a minute because it was Miss Ballard's car? Uh, that's part of the reason. Yes or no, Mr. Porter? Yes. Yes, it was. No more person drop. Who's ready with this uh, next witness? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. The defense would like to call Ms. Jill Coffin to the stand. scholarship to a prestigious college. So Miss Ballard was there? Yes. Okay. Can you please um, point to the, point, um, the other members that was, that was at the party? Objection, Your Honor. There's, they're wrong. Overruled. 
Okay, um, Ralph Gabardi was there, and um, Barry Porter was there, and um, that was, that's about it. that's all. And there were other people in that. Right, but just the ones that are here today. Yeah, just those two. Um, is, is Mr. Gabardi a friend of yours? No, not really. Then why did you invite him to your party? Um, well, I knew that Cindy sort of had a crush on him, and I wanted to introduce them to that was very nice of you. Um, what did you serve at the party? I just had regular party stuff. I just had um, like sandwiches and um, punch and soda. Um, was there any alcohol? No. I mean, yes, there was. Um, is it a com common practice of yours to serve alcohol? I didn't serve alcohol at my party. It was oh. brought by other kids who were at my party. Um, is your party an excuse for kids to go there and drink? No, it wasn't. It was to honor Cindy. Did you see Miss um, Ballard drink? Yes. Um, how often did you see her drink? Um, I really wasn't keeping track. Um, how did you feel about her drinking? I kind of enjoyed um, her drinking because she's usually very serious and that I just wanted her to celebrate her part, um, her getting the scholarship. Um, Knowing Miss Ballard as you do, have you ever seen her abuse her body? No. Can you recall what she drank that night? Um, she just had like some wine and a and a few mixed drinks. Do you remember how much she had to drink? No. Um, what was Sandy's behavior after she had drank some of the? Um, um she wasn't upset or hyper or anything like. Um, was there a time when you saw Miss Ballard and Mr. Gavardi together? Yes. When was that? Um, well, I'd seen them talking, and I got a glimpse of them dancing, and then um, around 11 o'clock, I saw them leaving through my kitchen to go outside. Um, before you saw them leave, did you see them together? Yes. What were they doing? They were just dancing and talking. Um, did Miss Ballard and Mr. Gavardi leave the party? Yes. Okay. Did they leave together? Yes. Um, it is now 15 minutes after they left. And um, do you recall hearing anything suspicious or odd? Um, Objection out of the question is too big. Sustain. Please ignore the question. You can rephrase it. Um, did, you, did you hear the car leave? Yes, I did. Um, what did you do when you heard that? I just um, looked out the window because it was kind of odd for me not to say bye. Let's see. Um, were you able to see the sitting arrangement in the car? Um, well, no. I just, I saw, well, yes, I did. I saw Cindy in the middle of the front seat because um, it was hard to see Ralph Gabardi with his dark clothes on. Um, do you know if Mr. Gabardi was in the car? I'm sure he was, because it would be hard for Cindy to tra to drive. Objection, Your Honor. Opinion. Um, I'm sure it was because it was hard for Cindy to drive if she was sitting in the middle of the front seat. Um, can you be certain that Mr. Gabardi was behind the wheel? <coughs> I'm sorry. Can you be cer certain that? Yes. Um, judging by the weather condition of the night of um, April 27, 1984. Um, was it easy to see Mr. Gabardi in the kind of clothes that he was wearing? No, it was hard. How sure are you of your answer? I'm positive. Okay. Again, Ms. Um, Cochran, as Ms. Ballard's best friend and knowing her physique, how, how positive are you that she can drive the car sitting in the middle of the front seat? She wouldn't have been able to drive, especially um, that she had been drinking. I'm sure that um, she wouldn't have wanted to drive in her condition. Do you visit Miss Ballard's house often? Yes. Can you show to the jury members um, which route you would take? Um, I would go on Skyline Drive, and that's my house, and I would go over here down this way up to her house. Um, is there any occasion in which you and Miss Valerie had to walk um, either to your house or to her house? Sure. Can you tell the um, jury which route you two would take? Objection, Your oh. Honor, that's not relevant. Sustained. 
Is it true you're Cindy's closest friend at Bellwether High? Yes. Um, will you please, for the benefit of the court, please point out your house for us on the map? That's my house. Will you please instruct the witness to answer yes or no to my following questions? Please answer yes or no to the answer's question. Um, was there alcohol at the party, Ms. Cochran? Yes. Um, was Cindy drinking? Yes. Um, was she drunk? No. On the night in question, was Miss Ballard infatuated with Mr. Gambardi? Objection, Your Honor. Witness has no personal knowledge. I mean, sustained. Sorry, no question. Uh, Miss Miss Cochran, was she attracted to him? Objection, Your Honor. Witness has no knowledge of that. Sustained. No question. Okay. Um, did you know that that alcohol is illegal for minors? Yes. Yes. Yet. It was at your party, correct? Yes. And it was at, so you were hosting the party, correct? Right. Okay. Do you realize then that you were breaking the law? Objection, Your Honor. Um, the witness has no, the tes testimony has been established that she has no, um. Do you realize that you were breaking the law, Ms. Cochran? I didn't break the law since I didn't. Ms. Cochran, so yes or no, please. Objection, no. Your Honor. The witness no. is not on t trial here. Overruled. Ms. Cochran. Do you realize that you were breaking the law, yes or no? No. No, you weren't. But you just stated two questions ago that alcohol is illegal for minors. Right. But it was at your house, correct? Right. So then you were, in fact, breaking the law. Objection, Your Honor, leading the witness. Please answer this question, yes or no? Yes. Yes, you were breaking the law. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Cochran, did you see them walk out to the car? Mm-hmm. You did. Um, did you actually see them get in the car? No. No, you didn't. Is it possible someone else could have gotten in the car with Miss Ballard? Yes. <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, how far were you, were you when you saw them walk out to the car? I, um, that's not a yes or no. Can you please instruct the witness to answer <laughs> both of my questions? Please answer. Objection, Your Honor. The um, witness has no knowledge of how far she was. Sustained. Please answer the question. So, Ms. Cochran, you don't know how far you were away when you saw them walk out to yeah. the car. You don't. Mm -hmm. where, where, what was your vantage point? Where did you see them? Through a window? Through a wall? Just your honor, the counselor is leading the witness. Sustain. Please move the question. Okay. Um, Ms. Cochran, was it raining that night? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, did, did you actually witness Mr. Gombardi entering the car? No. No, you didn't. Did you see the car pull out the driveway? Yes. Ms. Cochran, to your knowledge, who was in the car? Rob Gavardi and Cindy Ballard. But you just stated that you didn't see them get in the car. Right. So how can you be certain? Because they were the only ones who left the party. So there was no one outside? Right. Okay. Can I have 10 seconds, Mr. Yes, ma'am. 
it's just a call for conclusion on that. Well, what does it want to do is to think? He sure think you have the right words in common. Hey, look what I have to say. I have a few more questions, John. Please. Is it true, Miss Hoffman, that you were concerned about Mrs. Ballard's drinking? Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, Miss Cochran, since you were so concerned, it seems kind of contradicting that since you were the one that was serving alcohol, or actually, excuse me, it was at your party. Justin, Your Honor, counselor is um, leading the witness. Sustained. Please ignore that question. Mrs. Cochran, do you feel guilty that this accident happened and that Ms. Cochran is in this accident? Objection, Your Honor. Your Honor. Counsel, counselor is asking for an opinion. Sustained. Wait, wait, wait. So, look at me before you make those decisions. It's the wrong objection. It's a compound question. You can object no. on that ground, which means he can divide it up. But it's not. Uh, cross examination is leading the witness. That's the purpose of cross examination. It's a compound question. So they didn't say that. Yes. Um, counselor is making a compound um, question. Question. Sustain. Please ignore the question, Jerry. And we can, in that case, we're just compounding. And you tell him that he can rephrase it because it's not compound. Do you feel guilty about what happened, Miss Cochran? No. You don't. Not at all. No. Um. May I have a thirty-second recess, Your Honor? May. Thank you. Okay.
You, you testified earlier that you saw the car, the car pull away, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Could you definitely identify Mr. Gobardi in the car? Yes. So you positively know that he was in the car? Right. Okay. But you didn't see him get in? No. Okay. Um, uh, you also testified that you saw Ms. Ballard in the front seat, is that correct? In the middle of the front seat, is that right. correct? Okay. Um, was it raining? Isn't it true that there was rain on the window you were looking from? Mm -hmm. And isn't it true that there was rain on the car windows? Yeah. So couldn't it be said that your view, view was distorted and she could have been seen, it could have seemed like she was sitting in the front seat? No. No. Ms. Parker, this is important. Can you positively tell us who was driving? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Can I have Question is too vague. Thank you. 
Objection, Your Honor, that, that evidence is not in, well, that testimony is not in evidence. No, I was not. 
Objection, that calls for an opinion. Objection, Your Honor. The, the counsel's do, um, testifying for the witness.
was relieved. I didn't, I just didn't know what to do. And when he was there, then I really didn't have to worry that much because I knew he would take care of it. Was, um, not, were you defensive? No. I mean, I just wanted him there because I felt safe for that night. Did you answer all his questions? Yes, I did. What did he do next after that? He said that he went out to arrest me for a felony hit and run and for a DUI. Um, where did he take you? He took me to the police station. What did he do next? What did he do there? He gave me a blood, um, a breath test. What was your blood alcohol level? 0 0.04. So that's below the legally, the legal, legally drunk limit? Yes, it is. Um, did he drop the charges then? The drug offender? After he talked to his um, chief, he decided he would drop them. Um, Ms. Ballard, do you have any reason to lie to your court today? No. Objection, Your Honor. That has already been covered. Objection, Your Honor. Um, it is relevant. Irrelevant. Overruled. Is your car an automatic or a stick, Ms. Ballard? Ms. 
start, please. I'm over here. <laughs> Order, please. Objection, Your Honor. Witness has no personal knowledge. It's your car an automatic Objection, Your Honor. That is not in the fact sheet. It's not in evidence. Overruled. Ms. Ballard, is your car an automatic horse stick? An automatic. It's an automatic. Thank you. Okay. Um, does your car have an emergency brake in the middle of the seat, as most cars do? No, it has bar seats in it. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, will you please instruct the witness to answer yes or no to all my questions? Please answer yes or no to the following questions. Mrs. Ballard, did you care about Ms. LaFrance's condition? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Um, earlier, the defense counsel stated that you were you were a caring person and everything. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Miss um, Bowen, once at home, after the accident, couldn't we have driven back and stayed with Miss LaFrance to see her okay? No. Objection, Your Honor. That was already been covered. Oh, it is. Stay in here. Please do a question. Is that covered? No, it is. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Bowen. To stay, to stay home even though you knew she was there, hurt, possibly even dead, and you still elected to stay home? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, Ms. Ballard, Officer Martinez was at the hospital when Ms. LaFrance regained consciousness. Did you know this? Yes. Okay. Um, that was fi 55 minutes after the accident happened. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. So, after that, Officer Martinez went to Mrs. La Mrs. Franklin's house and then proceeded to your house. That was a full 55 minutes later. Um, did you know that? Yes. Okay. Um, you, you just said that you care for Mrs. LaFran Mrs. LaFrance's condition, correct? Right? Yes. Um, you please ask the witness to answer a question. Mrs. Cochran, why didn't you call the police after 55 <coughs> minutes or over an hour? Objection, that has house? already been covered. Overruled. Because I didn't know what to do. My thoughts weren't straight. I was scared. Uh -huh. But you stated that, you, I know you stated that you were trying to get your thoughts together and you were scared, but over an hour is a little, it's a quite a long time. She could have bled to death by then and you did nothing about it. Why? Because I had been drinking. And even though my blood alcohol level was not legally drunk, it was still affecting my concentration. Isn't it true the reason you didn't call is because you were making up a story to protect yourself? Objection, no, Your Honor. Counsel is calling for a conclusion. Sustained. Please move the question. Ms. Bowler, uh, Your Honor, will you please instruct the witness to answer yes or no to my following questions? Mr. Bowler, are you afraid of what this might do to your swimming career? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is calling for a conclusion. Sustained. Uh, please move that question. Uh, can I have a chance to do this? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for an opinion.
stated that that you gave Mr. Gombardi directions to your house, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but you just said that if you went home, you would have. Would you point out the way that you just testified earlier that you would go home? It takes Skyline Drive over to Twenty Third Street up through Meadow Valley Road. All right. So this is the way right here. Right. Right. Okay. If you gave him directions, why did he go this way? Because he asked for directions <coughs> after he'd already hit the prompts. Okay. So at the start of when he was driving, he was just driving wherever. Yes. So you didn't tell him where to go in the beginning when he first pulled out our driveway. Objection, Your Honor, leading the witness. Overruled. Oh. I didn't have any idea that you didn't know where I lived because my mother is the mayor and most people know where the chicken man lives. Is, is that true? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, Ms. Ballard, isn't it true that, um, that you did give him directions? Yes. Why wouldn't you give him directions at the beginning? the journey to your house. Because I was sick and all I did was ask him if he would take me home and then he started the car and I laid my head down and I was going, I was like dozing off. Uh -huh. okay. Can I have to take a recess? No. <laughs> no. No, you can have as many as you want. No, you won't. Oh, you can have as many as you want. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for opinion. No more questions, Your Honor.
through the windshield um, and the passenger seat. Well, Mrs. Cindy Ballard did testify that she was on the passenger seat and she was wearing a white sweater. Therefore, Ms. Cindy Ballard's testimony is consistent, as you can see. Now let's move on to Officer Martinez's testimony and compare it with Ms. Cindy Ballard. He testified that Ms. Cindy Ballard quietly and gladly, uh, quickly and gladly opened the door to him when he knocked on the door. He also testified that she willingly agreed to answer his questions, but then she got quiet. Well, didn't Ms. Cindy Ballard testify that she was glad to see Officer Martinez? She also testified that she opened the door quickly for Officer Martinez, willingly and agreed to answer the questions because of what has happened. She was a little bit disturbed and was really confused. <clears throat> Thus, Ms. Cindy Ballard's testimony is consistent with Officer Martinez's testimony. Now let's go on to Joe Crockin. Well, um, since her, it's been period. Okay. Let's go on to Mr. Porter's testimony then. Now, Mr. Porter has witnessed two doors slam, but he didn't hear any third door slam uh, after it's to York. And he didn't witness anybody leaving the car when he drove off on that night. And Cindy did testify that they did, her and her and Mr. Um, Ralph the body did in the car. <coughs> Therefore, it's consistent with her testimony. So ladies and gentlemen of the jury, since Mrs. Bow's testimony is consistent with all the other, with all the other related testimonies, and Ralph's testimony is, is not, there can only be one conclusion that Ralph is lying. Now Ralph's testimony is not consistent because nobody did and see, saw him when he left the party. Oh. You see, <coughs> Ralph Gabari was wearing black, a black members only jacket. Um, Ms. Franklin wouldn't be able to see black in the dark and in the rain, the misty rain, and because of the moisture on the window, we wouldn't be able to see clearly. Only um, the oh, glimpse of white. Consistencies of Ralph's testimony, along with Miss Franklin's uncertainty and Officer Martinez's negligence, my client, Miss Cindy Ballard, is therefore innocent. But you need only to find a reason for doubt. So please consider uh, carefully this doubt. Thank you. Testimonies from the victim, Ms. Dorothy Frank, uh, Ms. Jennifer Franz, uh, Ms. Dorothy Frank Franklin, the the witness on the scene, uh, Mr. or Officer Martinez, and also Mr. Ralph Barty. Okay, all of these testimonies have been very, you know, consistent with each other. All of them fit. There's no doubts, no contradictions, as you might say. Okay. Now, all of these witnesses took an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to you, the ladies of the jury. If somebody lies while in the witness chair, they can be fined by the judge for contempt in court. <clears throat> now, after the statement is finished, if he were to find everybody that has lied, he would be pretty rich. So let's get on with this. I'm not here to call anyone a liar. The witnesses have done a good enough job by themselves. 
As you notice, some of the witnesses were truthful and answered the best to the best of their knowledge. They gave you right answers. They stayed with their testimony. As we called all our defense, all our prosecution witnesses, they didn't contradict with each other. They all said that they saw Miss, or for example, Miss Lafran said that she was jogging right here. She stopped to cross the intersection. She did both ways, and then when she crossed in the middle, she was hit by the defendant, Miss Cindy Ballard. Also, Miss Franklin saw the same thing. So they both testified to the same. Ms. Franklin also testified that she saw a pale blue compact, license number van 64. She didn't recall the last number. Okay, as the defense tried to prove that it wasn't the car, but it has already been proven. So that was really irrelevant. She testifies that she wrote this information down. As soon as she got it all down, she called the 911 and the police arrived. That's when Officer Martinez came, wrote his report accordingly, testifies what he's, that he was on the scene of the crime after it happened, and that he proceeded to go to the hospital to interview Mr. Fr Mr. Franz for further. Then he followed up his investigation by going to Ms. Cindy Ballard's house. Okay, now while there, he smelled alcohol on her breath. Okay, at 2.20 a.m., he took her to the police department. Okay, then she registered a .04. But let's, let's put something in perspective for you. She stopped drinking at 11 o'clock. Okay. okay, she stopped drinking at 11 o'clock, so by the time she was at the police station, then her blood level was still 0.04, which means that she was drunk, especially according to her weight. She was drunk at the scene of the crime. Okay. Now, as you see, one of their witnesses was reputed because of all these, um, all the lies and of all the lies that was said. Okay. So, all I have to say to you, since this is cut short, is that these days, a jury, think carefully of your decision because it is in your, it is in your hands. Okay, to put the defendant, Ms. Cindy Ballard, to justice for you know, the crime she has committed. If she isn't put to justice, who knows how many more Ms. LaFrances will be heard before she, she is put to justice. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is dismissed. Yeah. I, I just...